In this video, I will show you the steps to set up this customized 2014 Jayco 12E pop-up camper. The first thing I want to do is level it front to back, and we're going to do that with a regular tongue leveler jack. And on the side, we have a little bubble level, and I can see right now that it's a little high on the front, so I'm just going to lower it down until we get that bubble in the center. I need to go down a little bit further yet. There we go, we're looking good on the bubble level now. So we're level front to back. Then it's a matter of leveling it side to side. And for that, we'll just use the stabilizer jacks. The quick way to operate them is with a cordless drill with a three quarter inch socket and I got a bubble level under here and I can see we're a little high on this side so what I'm going to do is raise it up on this other side first Then I'll look at the bubble level again, and just a little more. And we're good. So now I'm just gonna drop the other one until it just touches the ground. Just like that. And then I'll repeat the process in the back to now what I'm going to do, because I know this side over here was a little bit lower originally, I'm going to lower that one first. And then we'll drop the other side till it just touches the ground. And that should be good. All right, now we're ready to start popping it up. What we're gonna do is undo the, the roof latches. There's two on this side. And then I've got a total of four on the other side. And then one nice uh, feature with this uh, camper is it has a remote control to do the roof lift. There's also two buttons inside that will allow it to be done manually as well. And they're located down here. So it just press the button and up it goes. This is much easier than doing one of those hand cranks. And with the magic of video editing, we're going to do this a lot faster. <laughs> okay. Now what I like to do before I go up too high with it is there's these covers. I go ahead and get these unvelcroed and I'll go ahead and start it up at the top. And the reason I do that is I'm not that tall and if I don't do it now, then I'll need a ladder to do it later. And you got these on all four corners. And the purpose of these covers is in case it rains, it keeps uh, water from getting inside these tubes, which could wind up getting inside the camper.
Then I can finish going up with it. Now this has an automatic uh, limits and detection on it so once it's all the way up the motor will automatically stop and it does the same for going down. And I think we're about there. Yep, we're there. Now I'm just going to finish tucking up these covers. Now the other thing I'm going to do next is pull this canvas out a little bit where the dinette's at. That way it doesn't interfere with our bed sliding out and getting snagged. Alright, the next step I'm going to do is uh, to pull out the front bed. And this, I've got this little tool I made up. Um, if you didn't have the cargo box on the front, this would set up with a pull support, and it still can be done that way. In fact, this cargo box, there's only four bolts that holds it on. Those bolts can be uh, removed, and I'd say you probably want like four people to take to lift it. It can be lifted off, and then you can use this front part as a toy hauler. So this little tool I made up, it just hooks underneath the front part of the bed but I do have to slide it out just a little bit and this is another thing if you got two people setting up you really don't need this um, one person can just grab each side of the the bed and you're just gonna pull it out till we get out and then we're gonna continue going out until the both sides drop in place now I'm going to go to the back. So now the next step we're going to uh, pull out the rear bed. And I've added this rope, uh, especially for one person, it makes it easier because of this uh, job box, cargo box that we added on the back. So it makes it where you can get it started. Once you get it pulled out, then you can grab the bed itself. And we just come straight out till it comes to its stops. This can be a little easier with two people too, but one person can do it. All you got to do is lift up on the bed, get the, the pole into its slot, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then the rear bed is done. Then our uh, next thing we need to do is just slide the dinette. There's a little grab handle here. We just pull it out. Just comes out about a foot and a half. We just pull it out till it stops like that. So then this uh, on the side of the beds, these all have a Velcro and there's a mating Velcro on the underside. So you're just going to put that up kind of snug. And then repeat that for the other side. All right. I say this just same process as we did on the other side. It's pretty simple, straightforward. All right, then there's also a flap that comes down on the dinette piece that has the Velcro. So we'll put that in place. There's a little snap that goes there. And same thing, we got the Velcro. Goes down to the bottom there and we got the little snap. Now on the front bed, I found there's, there's two options. Um, you can tuck this Velcro up underneath and actually get it to seal. You may need something to stick it in there. Um, that's probably would be good if you're somewhere where there's a lot of insects that could be trying to get in. But what I usually do 
is I just let this overhang the box. The good thing about that is if you get rain, it keeps the water from getting on top of the box, which it won't hurt it, but it just uh, keeps it dry. And then I just tuck the, the very front up. Okay. And then the other side on the front is just the same thing. So then uh, we can uh, pull our steps out. And just fold it down. And then we're ready to start setting up the inside. So let's come on in. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is put up the uh, tent part over the dining area. So we just have this little brace that snaps onto the pole right between the two screws there. And we just slide it out. And then there's a little track up in here it goes into. Just like that. So we got that part done. So I want to set the uh, J sofa up to give us just a little more room in here. And that just pops up like that. Got some cushions that go to the dinette. I'm just going to lay them over here for the time being. Okay. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is uh, set up the galley. There's a little leg back here that we just uh, stick it up. And then we just slide this box here forward a little bit. And it just swings up like so. And then this other piece is an added feature that uh, we customize. So it's an additional shelf that goes over the top of the galley. Um, what we're going to do right now is just move it out of the way. Now this is an option. This makes a nice shelf up here that will hold the microwave and the toaster oven. If you're not planning on taking them and you don't need the shelf, you could just leave all this at home and then it's less weight and it'll give you a little more cargo space to haul stuff. So then the, uh, what I'm going to do is take the toaster oven and set it to the side. Then we can slide this forward. I'm going to take the microwave out. We'll set it over to the side. And then this shelf unit, I'm just going to set it up over on top of the dinette. So now this gives me room up to the front part so I can go ahead and set the bed up on the front part. So this is just like the dinette. We've got the clip here. It's going to snap on the pole between the two screws. And then we just push that back and up. And then this pops up in place. Okay, now we're going to set up the rear bed. And it's just like the front. So we've got the uh, little clip that goes over the back pole between the two screws we go up and then this just clips in place okay and also both the front and the back have these privacy screens they can be dropped down they just held up with velcro straps And then they have uh, little Velcro pieces to keep them held together. The neat thing they did with these is they left a mesh at the top so it allows air circulation. It's nice in the summertime if you're running the air conditioning. The AC will actually blow up in there and then it will circulate back out. So very nice feature that Jayco did. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put this uh, shelf unit up over the galley 
just to demonstrate how that's done. If you notice, the, the bottom side has the two LED light strips and the paper towel holder. The other thing, we want to make sure we have everything out of the shelf before we go to put it up. The other thing I want to point out is we've got four poles that support this. Two of them have caps. Those will go um, to the back, and then there's two poles that don't have caps, and those will go to the front. Okay, and then uh, the, this uh, pole that doesn't have a cap on either end, I'm going to put it in the front right position so there's a little hole in the countertop and that just drops down in and then there's a little recess in the bottom so you got to kind of try to find that once you have it you'll know because it won't uh, slip around if you don't have it in there that will wobble around so we're just going to start with that and then we're going to pick up the shelf unit and this is much easier to do with two people, but one person can do it. And we're going to stick the top uh, section into that pole. And then we're going to do the same on this end. And that just uh, slips into the little recess. Then we can add the poles in the back. And they just uh, snap into place. So like that. So now we got a nice uh, shelf here. It's ready to support our toaster oven and microwave. So then we can uh, stick our microwave and oven up on the shelf unit. And I just drop the cords down the slot. Do the same for the toaster oven. Just like that. All right, then we have a uh, heavy duty cord. There's a plug in behind this. We'll just plug that in. Then our light will plug in. Toaster oven will plug in. And microwave will plug in. And these you can either leave hang down or you can uh, tuck them up behind. That's what I usually do. And you can uh, kind of neaten the appearance up a little. And then the lights, there's a little switch on the cord. And now we've got excellent work light over our galley. So now this uh, this travel door, this here will come off. There's just two pins it just picks up. And then there's a hanger in the back that we can hang that from. So in the back, underneath the bed, there's two pins that this will slide into. And then it swings up. And then there's a strap with a little snap on it. And then that'll keep your travel door out of the weather. So one other thing I wanted to mention, the motorized unit, there's a cap here in the back. Which I haven't had this off in a while, but you can pop that up. And there's a little insert in there that you can hook a drill onto. It's just got a quarter inch hex head. So you can use a cordless drill to mainly run, run it up and down. If you don't have that, you can even use a ratchet with a quarter inch hex socket on it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, 
lower the outside screen door. Um, the first thing we want to do, there's little hanger straps that snap on. We're going to undo those. Now there's still supports that are on slide strips. Then there's a little safety clip. We're going to fold this piece down. Just lift it up and then we're going to slide it on out. Once we get it close, it's just going to go down into the track. Okay, then the top of the door is just held in place with these two barrel latches. Then we have four of these little clips. I found the lower clips are easier to do from outside. These just go over like that. Then the last step is just to put this Velcro on the door frame. There, now our door is in place. So what I'm going to do now is uh, show you how to set up the cooktop stove. So it sits back here. There's a little mounting bracket and this rail on the back keeps it there. This is just uh, for stowage while we're traveling. So then uh, it just sits up here on the galley and there's some little uh, recessed cups that the feet on this slip into so then it will stay put. And then uh, behind the uh, galley there's a little propane um, quick connect so it just plugs into that push it in till the uh, little barrel piece pops forward there we go and then uh, whenever you go to use it you can press the lever forward and that will turn the the gas on Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how to set up the, uh, the dinette area, the table. So the first thing we're going to do is pull out cushions that are stored underneath it, underneath the table. Set them over here on the J-sofa. And then we're going to lift this table up, and I'm going to set it over on the bench, the edge of it. Just like so. And we're going to do these Velcro straps. Pull the legs out. Snap the braces to their lock position. And then uh, we can set this down. I found if you slide it over with the legs, then will fit on the floor. It makes it real easy. One thing you do not want to do with this is try to lift it lengthwise because if you put a lot of force on these it will bend these these braces so doing it like this works works very well so then after we get that then we can put the seat cushions in now you notice on these seat cushions they got these little straps they've got a velcro tab on them and the purpose of that is it will mate with the back of the seat cushion that has some velcro and it just uh the whole purpose of it is to help hold the uh seat cushion so it doesn't fall forward and we do the same with the other side and like that Okay, um, lots of times in the past when I've went camping, I've never used the shower, so I leave it like this because it gives all this extra 
storage space. But if you need the shower or the porta potty, um, what you do is just lift up this countertop. And there's this little strap, it's just clipped to one of the uh, shower curtain hangers. And you need to snap that on there, and then that, that'll keep this from falling over on you. So that holds it kind of up in place. I'm going to just tuck this so hopefully you can get a little better view here. Then there's two wall pieces. So you're going to do the one that's um, back towards the bed. We're going to get that flap out of the way. And we're going to lift the other wall up at the same time. And then this is another thing that if you got two people makes it a little easier. But one person can do it. And uh, what you're going to do is then slide them up. Once you get them like that, they're pretty well freestanding. But there are these clips that fasten this back, uh, what's actually the tabletop part. So what we're going to do, you can see this, is... These just snap over in place, and I'll have to kind of reach over because the camera is a little in my way. Yep, that's got it. Just like that. So now you can see. Uh, the shower cassette unit. So you've got the shower faucet and one on the one side and then on the other side is the actual toilet unit. Shower curtain up above. You can just untuck it off the towel rack. You got a little towel rack that'll snap up out of the way or you can have it hang down. And then they just slide around. So, from inside here now, we're going to slide these rings past this clip. And what we have to do is rotate that little lock piece. And we're going to slide these rings over, the, over that whole clip. Hopefully I can do this and where you can see what I'm doing here. So you're just going to slide each one over like that. And you're going to do three of them on the this side that's facing the front of the camper. And then you're going to push that back up and lock it. Now when you're doing this you got to be careful. You don't want to force this rail forward any because in the back it's just got a little hook that it's hanging on and if you force allow this rail to move towards the center of the camper it can come off that hook and kind of fall down on you. So now we're going to do kind of the same thing on the other side but instead of doing three rings we're only going to do two rings. One, and there's two. All right, and then that allows the shower curtain to come on around. And then we've got Velcro. So when we're in here, we can Velcro this closed. And that will keep any water from spraying out. Just like that. Now hopefully I can get a shot of this at the very bottom. If you notice the shower curtain doesn't like to stay in. So there's two of these magnets with a little metal washer down there. So what you're going to do is snap that on and do the same thing on the other side. 
and then that's going to hold your shower curtain down in place and then the uh, shower wand there's a spot a little hanger on the ceiling hopefully I can get a picture of that and then your shower hanger is or your shower head is hanging from the ceiling And this just goes on the front of the shower. There's a little track in the bottom that the bottom end slips into. And it's helpful if I have it turned the right way. That's the bottom of the door. So it goes in that little track. And then there's these little latch pieces. You just turn those. 90 degrees like that. And like that and now our shower party potty has a door so the other thing we have left to do is to hook our propane or actually turn our propane on so we're just going to get access to our tanks. And this has an auto swap over valve, but it does have a primary usage that is selected to this tank. So that's the tank I'm going to turn on. And then we can uh, go through a procedure of uh, lighting our appliances. The first thing I like to do is to light the stove because it consumes quite a bit of fuel and it'll help purge the air out of our lines. Okay, so then we're just gonna take a lighter. There we go. Okay, so now we're out here at the hot water heater. Just gonna open the cover up. And man, we got some sun out now, so that's gonna start warming up here a little bit. So on the top of our control, you see right now it's at the off position. We're gonna rotate this top control so the pilot is out in front. There's a little notch, it lines up with a little indicator there. There's a red button. We're gonna hold that red button down. And we're going to take our lighter and we're going to hold that red button until we see our pilot light flame. And I may be blocking your view. Let me uh, do this again. So the pilot light's in there. I see it's already lit. I'm just going to give it a few seconds. It has to warm up this little heat sense bulb. Once that bulb gets warmed up, then it will stay on. If that bulb gets cold, it'll shut the, uh, the pilot off whenever you release the red button. So this should be long enough. Yep, yeah, it's staying on. So now we're just going to rotate it to the on position. You can hear it firing up. It's blowing heat out, warming our water up. So on here, this uh, outer dial, you can go from warm to hot. I found this little center mark between the hot and warm. It gives us plenty hot water, uh, probably around 120 degree temperature water. So that's where I always leave that. All right, so what we want to do on the refrigerator, I'm going to set it to run off of gas. There's a little uh, window over here, but there's a cover that blocks it. I say a window, it's actually just an opening. So I pop that up, we can see in there, and that's where the, the flame will be. So the first thing we want to do, there's a selector where you can go from DC, AC, or gas, or off. Um, I'm going to rotate that to where we're on the gas position. 
And then we're going to rotate this knob. It's a little white indicators over here and in here you probably can't see that but it says high cool. So we got it in that position and then what we're going to do is hold that down and then press this igniter button and watch in there. We'll keep doing it till we see a little pilot flame. There, pilot flame lit. And once it warms up, it'll stay lit. So there you can see the blue flame in there. Then we can just close that flap back down and that'll keep the wind or the elements from uh, blowing that flame out. And then when you operate on gas, you have a temperature range so you can do a high cool or if it gets too cold you can turn it down. And basically what that's doing is just changing the intensity of the flame. Um, and when you want to shut it off, you just turn that off to the top position. That turns it off and then you put this knob back to off. Now you can also, if you're hooked up to shore power, you can flip this up to AC and run it off of AC. Or you can also run it off a of DC, then I'll use uh, the power off of the DC. Yeah, I found this uh, on DC poles probably around 11, 12 amps most of the time. So you can run about a day off a of battery charge. Um, I, the only time I use the DC is when I'm traveling. Yeah, then you can keep the refrigerator cooling while you're going down the highway. And whenever I get somewhere, so if I've got power, I'm going to swap it to AC. If I don't, I'm going to put it on gas. That's all there is to that. So now I'm going to demonstrate hooking up the cooktop outside. So this clips over the track, and then there's a support brace that goes in there. Then we got our uh, outside quick connect for our propane. Turn the valve on. Open this up so we got our windscreen. It should be ready to light. There she goes. Now we can cook outside and we don't have to uh, worry about heating up the trailer in warmer weather environments. So the other thing I want to show you is the thermostat to the furnace. It's underneath the, uh, the front galley. Up at the top, it's hard to see, but there's a little lever. If you push it all the way forward, that's the off position. If you push it backwards, It'll click and that's the on position. And then there'll be a, uh, there's a thermostat under, on the underside. As you move it forward, it'll click on or off depending on the temperature. So then the furnace is here towards the back. And yeah, it's blowing out heat already. Um, the neat thing with the furnace is you don't have to light anything. It's all automatic. It's got an automatic ignition system. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's putting out heat. I think I can take off this flannel shirt now. So one other little added feature of this camper is the gray water outlet. have this uh, little union system just hook that up 
then you can hook a sewer hose onto that regular RV sewer hose and then uh, you can dump the gray water tank at a dump station or if you're at a site with a full hookup and it's got a little gate valve here you pull that and it'll drain the gray water tank so this bike carrier I normally only use or have it on here if I'm going to be using it I should say um, there's just a bolt that goes through the bottom So you just insert that, put it in place. Line it up, put the bolt through. Put the nut and washer on there. Then you can kind of snug it up. I'm not going to mess with that right now because I'm not going to leave this on here. Um, then this will go up. Now if you notice, the bed gets in the way of it being all the way up. But there's this little strap. So you can put the keeper pin in there. And then the uh, bike rack will uh, be supported here. Um, now this wouldn't be how you'd have it for traveling. This is how you would set it for like overnight. Then when you put the bed back, this will go straight up and this keeper pin, instead of going through this uh, strap, will go through the bike rack support. Then it'll be upright and your bikes will be upright overhead. So the next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate uh, setting up the awning. Um, if the camper's popped all the way up, you'll need a ladder to reach it, or at least I do. Um, there is a trick when you're setting up, if you know you're going to have the awning out, um, when you're get it up just to the point where you can still reach it is you can go ahead and open up the awning let it down then finish popping up the camper and then set it up that way you don't have to use the ladder but I usually always carry a little uh, step ladder with me so it's not too big a deal so we're just gonna unzip this And once we get that, there's a little Velcro strap that hold this in there. I'll start undoing now. I'm gonna undo the back one. I'm going to sit back up in the middle. I'm going to do the last strap towards the middle. And then you just allow this to unroll. Then once we get it all the way down, you're going to find there's two of these brackets that'll swing out. Oh, that wasn't actually the one I wanted out. So then I'll just let that kind of sit there as it will.
Hiked on the other side. We just set that foot in there. And I'm going to sling this out till we get to the first little detent. Baby, there we go. Do the same with this side. And I got the bottom pole. Now we're kind of at the lowest spot. We're going to want to do, twist this a little, and we're going to get our fabric back over it. Then we're going to want to go up to the highest position on this outer one. Same with this other side. And that should give us enough room that the uh, screen door will clear for the most part. Then there's two other legs here. They have a little socket on the end of them. And these are designed to go up into a little socket on the roof. You're going to put that fairly taut. And we'll repeat for the other side. So then that, that keeps the uh, locked in place, uh, even with a fairly light wind. It's not going to go anywhere, so it gives a nice little area of shelter underneath. This concludes the demonstration video for setting up this customized 2014 Jayco 12E pop-up camper. There are also videos that demonstrate packing up as well as features of this camper. Also available is a video showing the installation of the solar panels and the lithium iron phosphate battery setup. To help us advance our series of videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you.